Hi everyone. So today we will talk about electric charge. We'll just kind of get into an introduction of what electric char charge is and some properties about its behavior. Uh, we'll continue to learn more about electric charge and how it behaves throughout this unit. All right, so electric charge is a property of matter um, and it comes in two forms. What we say is positive and negative. Uh, if we have an object and it has either a surplus of positive or negative charge, we call it being charged. Um, though to be a little bit more precise here, what we actually mean here is that we have an object and it either has a surplus of negative charges or a deficit of negative charges. Um, but in either case, uh, if there's an equal amount of positive and negative charges um, on this object, it is neutrally charged, so just neutral. Charge is related to the atom, um, so charge fundamentally comes from um, the, the subparts of an atom. So atoms we know are made up of protons, neutrons, um, and electrons. Protons and neutrons make up the nucleus, where electrons orbit the nucleus. Um, we've got uh, electrons, which are negatively charged, and protons that are positively charged, where neutrons are neutral, hence why they're called neutrons. Um, so if we have some sort of object, so we know objects are made up of atoms, right? And overall, generally speaking, we're dealing with atoms that are, are neutral, unless we're dealing with ions, and let's not really worry about that for right now. But um, for our object made up of protons and neutrons, the object it, it itself has then some set amount of protons, right? Because there's a set amount of atoms in whatever the object is, right? Well, um, what can happen is then we can have extra electrons because electrons are relatively easy to remove from the atom, well, depending on the atom, but that being said, um, removing and ad adding electrons to atoms is something that can be done simply as opposed to the protons itself. So if we have some sort of object and it's charged, that means that that object then has excess electrons um, or a deficit of electrons, as I referred to earlier. Um, so if we have an object and there are more electrons overall for that object, it is negatively charged. And if there are fewer electrons compared to protons, then it is um, positively charged. If you have an equal amount of protons and neutrons, it is neutral. Charge is a conserved quantity. Right? In physics, we're really into conservation laws. This is a very important one. This is saying that a charge cannot be created or destroyed. It can be transferred though. All right, so really what we're dealing with here is the transfer of electrons from one object to another. Um, and that is, but the total amount of electrons are not gonna be created or destroyed, they're just moved from one thing to the other. Uh, so this is very important. So uh, for example, a common uh, little demonstration to show electric charge or ideas behind it you've probably done in elementary or middle school is taking a balloon and rubbing it in your hair and then you can take the balloon and either stick it to a wall or you notice your hair kind of stands up um, all these are, are manifestations of what's going on here with the property of charges so what you're doing here by rubbing the balloon against your hair is you're transferring electrons from your hair to the balloon so you're giving the balloon an excess of negative charge, not negative charges, so it's negatively charged, and your hair now is positively charged because there's a lack of electrons there. Now, it's the same amount of charge, the same number of electrons, just some as the number of electrons that have transferred from your hair are now on the balloon. Now, what's really interesting here is electrons are, are a fundamental particle, meaning that they cannot be broken up into smaller pieces. They are... Um, an elementary particle of matter. Uh, so electrons are actually what we know as an elementary charge. The amount of charge an electron has is the fundamental amount of charge, right? And this is given a, a name, so to speak, elementary charge E. And so our fundamental amount of charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb. So there's a couple more zig figs here listed on the PowerPoint. This number here is on your formula sheet. So when we're dealing with an electron, an electron has a charge of negative E, being negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, where a proton has a positive charge of this equal amount. 
So here, this capital C that I mentioned is uh, called a coulomb. So this is what the units we use for charge in, for our SI units. All right, so here this example, I will make in a uh, another video and I will uh, link to it as well. All right, but if you want, take a, take a look at this, um, see if you can figure this problem out um, and see whether or not you want to watch the other video. It's up to you. So one thing about electric charge is that there's an electric force associated with it. All right, again, going back to the balloon hair example, uh, if you are, so that balloon that is now charged after rubbing it in your hair then can stick to a wall, or it can actually, if you bring it next to your hair again, you see that your hair lifts up, it accelerates. So you're, um, there is then a force associated with this, right? If your hair accelerates towards the balloon, that acceleration is indicative of a force. Uh, so we'll focus on this electric force next lesson. I do want to come uh, talk about just another vocabulary word you might come across being conductor and insulator. Uh, particularly here we're dealing with charge conductors and insulators. You can also have conductors and insulators for uh, heat as well as a common common thing. But we're talking about charge here. So this is a way we can categorize materials about how well based on how well they transfer charge. So if we have a material that's a conductor, that means that the atoms or molecules that make up this conductor uh, can very um, eas easily transfer electrons, meaning its valence electrons are not tightly bound and it's easy for the electrons to kind of bounce around in this conductor, right? Particularly if there's some sort of force allowing it to do so, if electrons are attracted in some way. That's entirely for a different lesson. But Conductors mean these valence electrons can easily move from, from one atom to another. If we have an, uh, an insulator, right, that means that the electrons here are tightly bound to the, um, the atom or molecule. So these valence electrons then cannot easily transfer from one atom to the next. So, uh, so some common conductors are going to be metals. Metals are typically conductors. Uh, aluminum and steel and gold are, are examples of this, where insulators are typically non-metals, we'll say. So wood, plastic, and rubber will be typical examples of an insulator. So this is why if you're dealing with, let's say, wiring, uh, if you look at like your headphone wire, you notice that inside the headphone wire you see some copper, copper is a very nice conductor, um, that is wrapped around that, that copper wiring is then some plastic uh, to insulate that conductor. That way the electrons that are transferring inside the conductor, sending the electrical signals that are the music you listen through your headphones, um, then those electrons don't escape and, you know, give you a little zap or anything like that. Um, now, an interesting property of uh, conductors and insulators, they can either, they can both be uh, charged or neutral. Uh, a lot of people think that insulators are always neutral. This is not necessarily the case. Case in point being the balloon we were just talking about. Balloon, that rubber, or I guess it's not rubber, generally balloons are what, latex? Uh, the latex is an insulator and you can have excess charge be uh, on that insulator or removed from that insulator. Um, that being said, a very important property of conductors themselves is conductors, any extra charge is going to just lie on the surface of the conductor. Whereas an insulator, excess charge can be um, throughout the, the insulator itself, throughout the material. So if we're looking at some chunk of conductor, perhaps we have a solid sphere, all right, a solid copper sphere, right? We'll pretend we're, we're nice, nice and wealthy and we can afford that. So we have a, a solid sphere of copper. Um, if we were able to like zoom in on that inside the inside of that that uh, that copper, right? Those copper atoms in the center of the sphere, you have uh, equal number of protons and electrons. But if you zoom out, right? If our copper was neutral on the surface of that sphere, then we'd still have the same number of protons and neutrons. But if say it was negatively charged, that means on the surface of that sphere, there's going to be extra electrons on that surface. And in fact, they'll try to evenly distribute themselves all across that surface. 
Um, whereas insulators, if there is excess charge, that can exist inside the conductor itself. So if we had a sphere of solid plastic, right, if we zoomed in, we could have, if we had a charge sphere, there being either a deficit or excess electrons inside the middle of the sphere as well or throughout it. All right, so actually that's all I have for you guys today. All right, so if you want to, I recommend it. Please take a look at the example.